Hey everyone, welcome to Fabric Espresso series about data engineering and data science. My name is Estera and today Irin is joining us to discuss data preparation and exploration with Data Wrangler in Microsoft Fabric. Irin, thank you for being here. Could you take a moment and introduce yourself? Thank you, Estera. Absolutely. I'm Eren Orbe. I'm a product manager on the Synapse Data Science team as part of Microsoft Fabric. And I'm here to talk a little bit today about data acquisition, data exploration, and data preparation using a tool that we have in Fabric called Data Wrangler. So let's start with the first question, as I believe that every data scientist and every data engineer who want to be a data scientist or try those features is wondering, what is Data Wrangler? So Data Wrangler is a notebook-based tool that we have available in Fabric Notebooks, and it works largely as a code accelerator. So you open up Data Wrangler on a specific data frame that's active in your notebook, and you get this immersive grid-like environment, kind of like Excel, with descriptive statistics and automated visualizations built into column headers and more. And then you can go ahead and you can start using a series of UI-based operations to transform the data. Now, there are lots of tools available like this. The crucial thing that we found with Data Wrangler is that it generates code, and that's what data scientists tend to appreciate. So the output is not just the cleaned data in the grid, it's also Python code that corresponds to all those steps that you've done. Yeah, so now I'm excited and wanna uh, see how it works. So do you have any demo? Oh yeah, absolutely. So Fantastic. let me just take you over here to my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna take a step into a Fabric notebook here to show you what Data Wrangler can do. Data Wrangler works by allowing you to apply a bunch of steps and generate code in real time and then export it back to the notebook seamlessly. So you land there with cleaned data, but also a reusable script that you can ultimately automate or edit yourself after the fact. Now, in this notebook, I just have a markdown cell here showing you a little bit about Data Wrangler, giving you a screenshot of what the experience looks like. And basically what I'm going to do is use the tool to replicate a series of cleaning steps that you might see if you're trying to train data for a machine learning problem. Now, before you train it, you have to make sure that it's in the right state. So you might need to drop certain rows with missing values. You might need to drop rows with duplicate values. You might need to drop columns entirely. You might need to do some one-hot encoding. There's a long list, and I encourage you to check out Data Wrangler yourself, but let's take a look at how we might just do a few of those steps. So first, I'm going to take a look at my Lakehouse Explorer, where there are tables and files that might have been placed there by other data scientists or colleagues on my team. I'm going to actually head to this churn problem and to the raw files here, where I see a few CSVs. To get started with Data Wrangler, I'm actually going to load this churn raw CSV into a pandas data frame in my notebook and run this cell to get that active and display what that looks like here. This is going to be a view that's familiar to many of you. So using the fabric display function, you can start to get a more dynamic preview of a data frame right in your notebook. But if you want to apply operations to that data and kind of get a more immersive experience, that's when Data Wrangler would come in. So we see this data frame that's been loaded to the notebook. I'm going to head over to the data tab here in that notebook ribbon and click on launch data wrangler. It's going to give me a drop down of the active pandas data frames in my notebook session. And when I click on this data frame, we're going to see that same data opened in a new different environment where we can get started with exploration and certain data prep. So here what we're seeing now is that same data frame, but you see that the environment looks a lot like Excel or another kind of full screen environment where you can explore data separate from the notebook in a, in a different interface, but still know that all of the code is going to be generated behind the scenes. We see our data grid, which previews what that data looks like right now. There's information about the column types, about missing and unique values, and there are built-in dynamic histograms for numeric types, for instance, right in those column headers. To the right of this grid, we have a summary pane, which has dynamic summary information about this data frame overall. So we see that Data Wrangler has sampled 5,000 rows. We see some information about rows with missing values. We see some information about those missing values in particular. And if we go and start clicking around on columns, that summary panel is actually going to update in real time 
to home in on the specific value that we're looking at. To the left of the grid, we have this operations library where you have a bunch of familiar data cleaning steps that you can apply in a matter of clicks. I'm going to show you a few of these in a second. And the thing to keep in mind is that as you apply them, the grid is going to update to show you the result of that data step and the code is going to be previewed below in this panel. So if we want to do a kind of quick example, we might take a look at this row number column and notice that it's actually just an index. It's not really useful for our purposes. It's not going to be useful for a model. So we can go ahead and drop it. There are two ways to do that. We can click on this contextual menu for the column and just click on drop. And we'll see that the operations panel is another place where you can apply that step. But what happens when you do it is you get a preview of basically what the data would look like had that step you know, just been applied. So there's a red highlight on this row column to show that it's going to be dropped. And then below, there's actually code showing in Pandas the equivalent of that step that you can apply or discard. If for some reason it didn't look right to us or we changed our mind, we could discard it and head back to the original state. But I'm going to go ahead and click Apply, and that's actually going to commit that step and update the data preview that we see in this grid. So now that step has been applied, the row number has been dropped from the data. We see to the left that in this cleaning steps panel, there's a second step added once we've loaded the data. Now we've also dropped a column. And we're going to keep adding steps in that fashion. So you select the operation in any target columns, you wait for the preview, you apply the step if you like the way it looks, and then you get that code. So I pointed out earlier when we first opened this data frame that there was some missing data, some missing values in rows that we saw thanks to that summary panel. So now we might want to kind of head back there and, and take a look. If we go to the operations pane, which is the main sort of hub for applying operations, you see that there's an option to actually drop missing values. And if we open this up, it's going to explain what it does. So it's going to drop rows with missing values in the targeted columns. I can do a select all, and what this is going to do is get rid of any rows that have missing values in any of the columns. And again, we're updating the data grid in real time so we can see what the data would look like. We are also just getting a drop rows with missing data across all columns pandas step. Pretty simple line, but it's there below in, in case maybe you have less familiarity with pandas or for some reason, you know, you, you're kind of getting back into things. You, you don't want to go look at the documentation. And then you can go ahead and apply that step uh, and instantly, right, that's going to commit that to the series of cleaning steps at the left and so on and so forth. Now, I've shown you a few pretty simple operations just to give you the hang of what this tool looks like. I definitely recommend going into Data Wrangler on your own sample data or on data you haven't seen before to kind of take a look and get started. But ultimately, as we build out this feature, what we're trying to do is to allow you to recreate the same data cleaning steps that you'd need for training a model on data in this separate tool. So there are more complex operations that you might want to apply, and, and the list is really growing as we build out the feature. If, for instance, we wanted to do something like scaling numeric values. We might notice these credit score and age columns have these histograms, we have the distribution, but they're not scaled between zero and one. And maybe for a modeling problem, we actually want to confine that range and, and have them normalize between zero and one. It's really easy to do that too. We can actually do it on two columns at once. So I'm going to select this credit score and select this age, and I'm going to go to my numeric operations here in that menus menu panel. So I'm going to select credit score and age, and then I'm going to go here to the numeric operations in that pane. If I select scale min and max values, it's targeting those two columns. We've selected them, and you have the opportunity to provide a range. Now, it's defaulted to 0 to 1, which is what I want, but if I wanted, I could always go in and edit that. If we take a look now back at the data grid, we see that we have sample kind of if we take a look back at the data grid, we see that we have previews of what those operations would look like for both columns. So those are in green. We also have the code below that's been applied to both. And again, we can continue applying it in that fashion. That's an example of a numeric step. There's also the ability to do one hot encoding on categorical columns. So if you want to take a categorical value and kind of convert it into a series of zeros and ones across new columns, you can do that too. So we might want to take a look at these gender and geography columns. Again, I can select both of these. Uh, I can head over here to the operations panel, 
Uh, and if I find that one hot encoding uh, do, 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 under formulas, just showing off some of the other operations, uh, we can click on it, get that geography uh, and gender set in the target dropdown, uh, and then see the preview in real time and apply that code if we want. Now, in this case, what's happening is we're adding columns to the end of the data frame that have zeros and ones that encode those unique values in the categorical columns. So we can see what the distribution looks like in this way. And if those columns look right to us, we can just click on apply and do the same thing, committing that step to the series of running operations on the left. Now, I previously expanded this operations panel. There's a lot here and there's more to come. We know that data preparation is a really broad task with a lot under the umbrella. We're working with some of our colleagues in the developer division in Microsoft to keep expanding the list of operations here. Data Wrangler is a tool that is also available in VS Code, so I encourage you to try it there as well. And there's a lot of interesting additional features that are coming to the Fabric implementation. So right now, for instance, we're working on a Pandas data frame, but in the future, we're shipping a feature that will allow you to open a Spark data frame in Data Wrangler as well and start to do the same thing, right? Apply steps and generate the code in real time. Now that I've done a few steps here, I might wanna go back to my notebook and keep going. And you'll notice that everything you've done in Data Wrangler can be exported there really simply. If you go to the sort of top ribbon here, we could actually save this data grid as a CSV and have a copy of the clean data. We could copy the code overall that we've committed here to our clipboard, or as in most cases, we could just add the code back to the notebook and that's gonna take us back. Now, what we see here is that all of those committed steps have been wrapped up in a function. So this isn't destructive, we haven't touched the original data frame, but we have packaged all of that magic, all those operations you've done in Data Wrangler into a function that you can then go and apply in a single click, and then you get the cleaned data here. Uh, and so in this case, now what we see is just a really simple kind of static preview of the cleaned data frame, which also goes to show uh, sort of how much more detail and, and granularity you get in the Data Wrangler view. As I mentioned in Fabric, we're excited to be working on capabilities for Spark integration. We're also working on shipping a feature that will allow you to sample that data frame with more flexibility. So choose a number of records to open in Data Wrangler and choose whether you want to show you know, the first 10,000 rows or the last 10,000 rows or a random sample. Uh, and we're also working on some AI integrations that would allow you to do kind of more tailored things like maybe describe a operation in natural language and get pandas or PySpark code spat out as a result as a kind of custom operation. The goal here, again, is to facilitate this process of data preparation to make the notebook a more open, accessible, and democratized place for different members of a team who might have different levels of experience. So maybe you are new to pandas. Maybe you have a lot of experience preparing data in another tool or another format, but you're trying to get onboarded here. Maybe you're an experienced developer, but you're just not that familiar with the pandas documentation for whatever reason, and you want to explore that way. Maybe you are familiar, but you still want to explore your data frame in that immersive environment. We're trying to make it easier for different personas for different people, different team members to collaborate in the same environment, but we're keeping code front and center the entire time. So you can always share and reuse that work. That's truly, truly great. Thank you for all the insights. And uh, frankly, uh, you cover almost all my questions. I wanted to ask you about the integration with VS Code. You covered that, so there is, right? Now I'm wondering, is the same experience uh, covered in VS Code as you presented in the notebooks? Is it truly the same in terms of features? So the features should be pretty similar as far as the operations you're using. Now, if you're in VS Code, it's likely that you will be using a local uh, Python kernel instead of fabric compute. So there are some differences there in terms of performance and flexibility. But the core experience, right, this ability to apply data steps in a matter of clicks, get the code generated, and then export that code, that is the same. Uh, and we look forward to kind of keeping them in lockstep together. We partner really closely with our colleagues in DevDiv to, you know, build on each other's work and make this tool available in as many places as we can. Super. So two more questions. Uh, again, as a data scientist, when I should consider using Data Wrangler? In which cases? Uh, 
So Data Wrangler right now is best suited to cases where you want to transform data in a pandas format, in a pandas CSV. Now that could be data that comes from a CSV in the file section of your lake house. It could be data that you've read into a data frame from the table section of your lake house. It could be data from the internet. You're kind of just pulling in from a URL. The limitation right now is we're operating on pandas exclusively. But as I mentioned, we're going to have support for Spark coming in, for PySpark data frames as well. And we're hoping to integrate Data Wrangler in different places in Fabric so that you can do those early series of steps for cleaning data, exploring data, and transforming data. Right now, I think the shortest answer is when you're in your notebook and you're working with a Pandas data frame, that's when Data Wrangler can start to help you. And in the future, if I'm working with Spark data frame as well. Yes, absolutely. That's coming down the line and we'll keep you posted. I'll be back, Estera, to talk about that when we have that capability. So the last question is uh, for those who are just entering Microsoft Fabric and entering data science capabilities inside the tool, can you share some resources uh, for viewers uh, who want to learn more, who want to watch more, and who want to educate more about the Data Wrangler capabilities? Absolutely. So we have documentation uh, in our learning resources at Microsoft on the web. If you Google Microsoft Fabric Data Wrangler, that should come right up. Uh, or if you Bing Microsoft Fabric Data Wrangler, I should say. Uh, there are also AI samples that we have. So end-to-end -end samples that kind of walk you through a whole data science workflow. Everything from uh, acquiring data, preparing data, training the model, uh, applying the model for a batch uh, inferencing scenario. And some of those work in data preparation with Data Wrangler. So if you head to the AI samples under our documentation, you can get started that way. There's also separate documentation and a video walkthrough for VS Code done by one of my colleagues on that team. Uh, and so there are video resources to kind of walk you through the same sort of experience that I've demoed today. We also welcome feedback. So we, we love to hear from customers uh, about experiences they want to see, features that aren't there yet, ways that we can make the tool even better. Super. And always uh, they can ask questions uh, uh, under the, the video on YouTube. Uh, like We are happy to take all the questions, suggestions, Absolutely. and uh, comments. Yeah, so, I think they're, they are soliciting feedback on the VS Code experience. We also have a Fabric Ideas Forum where you can put in ideas for future requests. Uh, and we're eager for that feedback. You're also always welcome to get in touch by social media, Twitter, uh, you name it. Super. Erin, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, thank you, Sarah. It's my pleasure. For sharing all the insights. And uh, I believe that uh, more and more data engineers and data scientists will uh, try to discover data wrangler, wrangler capabilities in Microsoft Fabric, both notebooks and in uh, VS Code. Absolutely. It's not a replacement for the power of coding and for the utility and flexibility of notebooks, but we hope it's an experience that can make the audience wider, uh, help onboard different people, uh, and give some flexibility to data scientists who are coming into the the platform with different roles, different levels of experience, and much more. Super. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank all you. for watching. Remember, if you found that uh, valuable, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and uh, that will help you to be updated. We'll post you with upcoming content, the next videos about data engineering and data science in Microsoft Fabric. Thank you, and see you again during the next episode.